This is very important for Hegelian philosophy, also uh, for Marxism, right? The distinction that you, that is the subject, yourself, right, who are observing, and the object, the others, or the material work upon which you are reflecting. There is also another big word, the word of totality. Totality means when subject and object are together in one unity. If you are dealing with 20th century theories, critical theory, this is a central notion of, you know, um, subject and object. Let me try to labor on this. Hegel uh, is seen in modern philosophy as the founding father of critical theory. The essence of critical theory is that it believes uh, that the major task of philosophy to subject human consciousness to critical scrutiny. He really thought that somehow um, consciousness precedes uh, a material existence. At the origin of the world, there is an absolute spirit existing, and that existed the material world as such. Hegel's fundamental idea is that when you have the absolute spirit, right, uh, and this is not a personal God, right, but just the idea, uh, he, here this is a, a situation of totality. The absolute spirit is at the same time subject and object united in itself, right? And that's what Hegel calls totality, and as a term, totality being used later on in critical theory. And we are saying we are searching for totality, we are searching for the unity of subject and object. Then in Hegel's, the second stage is that subject and object are divided from each other. There is the material world without consciousness, and consciousness becomes absolute consciousness. And this is the, st uh, this is the situation of alienation. Then, as human beings emerge, subject and object beginning to merge, right? Consciousness emerges. These are subject. This is you. And object are the conditions of your life, right? And Marx is very much following uh, this idea. I mean, he of course eliminates the whole idea of absolute spirit, right? For him, this is too speculative, right? Marx's project is to bring this whole idea of alienation down to earth, to everyday experience. Feuerbach is a materialist, all right, but he's a mechanical materialist. And Marx wants to bring dynamics uh, in the, uh, his uh, materialism. Marxism is not positivist. It believes that we can change the world. He said Feuerbach's materialism was simply reflective. It actually meant subject and object remain separated. And he said, well, in the new materialism, truth is a practical question. It means you have to bring, by human practice, subject and object together. You have to change the objective conditions of your life. And Marx is always read as a determinist. No. Praxis, practical activity, is the key of Marx's theory. The chief defect of Feuerbach is that sensuousness is not perceived as human action, activity. He says sensuous Activity is what I emphasize. Well, new materialism, this is, you know, one of the most important sentences Marx wrote down. Uh, well, the question whether objective truths can be attributed to human thinking is not a question of theory, but it is a practical question. Man must, must prove truths that this worldliness of his thinking in practice. That's the essence of Marxism, that the truth is not the subject reflecting on the object, but the interaction of the subject between the object, right? That the subject changes the object in order to meet the need of the subject. That's the major point. Hegel's starting point was abstract thinking. 
Feuerbach, he's a materialist. He thinks what is real is what we can grasp with our senses. Marx said, no, this is sensuous practical activity. It has to be sensuous, but it has to be practical.